What's up everybody and welcome to what very well may be the final installation of Deploy This. Now if I've not covered something that you would like to see in a deployment video, please feel free to note that in the comments and go ahead and hit subscribe so that way if there is something you would like to be covered, you'll get notified when I uh, make a video for that. So please go ahead and leave any comments if there's anything you'd like to see. However, for this one, I felt it would be good to leave on a, you know, short and sweet note. And since we were looking for, you know, Heroku alternatives as of the last couple of weeks, one of the things that I decided to do was add in the ability to have a static export. And that way I could use some static uh, site hosts. And Netlify is one that was not even in the initial consideration for the series. However, because of the last couple weeks, it's now what I decided to close out with. So Netlify actually does have some limited hosting options for full stack applications. And I've almost always traditionally used them as, um, you know, just client side hosting. And I think they do have some pretty good Next.js support out of the box. I think it'll actually be easier to use a Next.js app out of the box than it would to host a static site. There's a little less work involved. But all that being said, it's still extraordinarily easy with Netlify. So I need to um, create a new project, connect to GitHub, and select the Deploy This repo. Now, I do have some uh, build settings to modify. So this, by default, has picked up that it is a Next.js application. And it's going to be able to build that you know, super easily for us, which is really nice. I could leave this as is, running just the typical npm run build script, where it has all of the uh, split assets in that .next folder. However, you know, we did create the site to have the flexibility of being a static site as well so i could hit deploy now and have you know that live application or i could have it pre-compiled to those static pages which is going to be the you know super fast efficient solution um, just because you don't have anything to dynamically you know calculate your everything is pre-compiled um, and for a portfolio site especially you know i think speed is kind of key have just a really nice clean uh, portfolio site that links out to applications that show off some dynamic functionality. That's kind of the way to go in my opinion. But I'll change this to npm run export. And my publish directory that I say that that script outputs to is underscore static. And there are some environment variables I do have to change. Um, I forget what it's called though because I haven't done a Next.js deployment with Netlify in forever. Uh, so I'll have to wait for it to incur that build error before we <laughs> encounter that. So um, the error that we will hit is that it assumes it's a Next.js application by default, and it's going to look for some like specific build packs. And I have to be like, no, 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 no. This is not a typical build. Since I'm running like... Um, some running next export i i need to go through a different process and let's see and while we wait for that to get incurred uh pricing wise i have um we're about to incur that error i believe and if not great but if so cool because i can get it to redeploy so as far as pricing goes on my personal account i have a half dozen or so uh, not Next.js apps, but a half dozen or so applications deployed with Netlify, and you know, it's great. They're available 24-7, so it's a little nicer offering than Heroku in that, you know, it's always available. Um, I don't know what the cutoff quite is. Oh, here's that error. Let's see. So yeah, it's like, hey, 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 I've got a next build, is that what you meant? Or next folder, is that what you meant? And I'm using next export, like that is my bundling script that we decided to go with. And we have to set the environment variable next Netlify plugin skip. 
and set that to true. So let's go ahead and enable that real quick and we'll go look at the pricing for this. So under your deploy settings is where you'll find your environment variables and under build and deploy environment edit variable we'll set that to true. Let's see, and I don't know if I have to kick off a rebuild. You know, some cloud platforms will go ahead and do an automated rebuild upon environment variables um, kicking off. Let's see. So it still hasn't built up fully yet. Let's go look at its builds. Build and deploy. Let's see. I always forget where everything has like a manual redeploy. Oh, there we go. Deploy, trigger, deploy. Okay, so it's rerunning here. And while it's doing that, we can actually go look at the pricing module. So as long as you, you know, don't surpass some crazy figure, let's see. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, under the free tier, as long as you don't exceed one terabyte of bandwidth and 25,000 build minutes, then uh, you're, you're okay on the starter tier. Now at that point, you know, it's becoming a pretty integral part of your business if you've got a terabyte of bandwidth and are spending, you know, it's 25,000 minutes and hours, like, like 416 hours of having code build, that's pretty substantial. <laughs> like. They're a pretty integral part of your business. You might consider, you know, getting a pro or business subscription. So that way, you know, you get support features or at least you are supporting Netlify. But as it stands, uh, now they're just a good solid host, like free for the most part. Looks like everything is live. So looks like I closed out of my link, but or it's still in the deployment process. Okay, so site is live. Let's go grab that URL. And there we are. Oh crud, but I did forget to push my code saying that Netlify was marked as true. So I guess I can go ahead and push that code in retrospect and have it, you know, redeploy. And in fact, let's just do that. And that way all of my sites will go ahead and have that change updated. I'll say finishing out the series as I mark Netlify as complete. Cool. And I mean, that's going to take a little while to you know, pick up on the changes, but uh, by default, I do have it watching the main branch. So oh, there we go. We see my commit come through, finishing out the series as I mark Netlify as complete. And of course, you know, virtually every other thing that we've evaluated in the series, which has been Heroku, you know, rest in peace, uh, Vercel, DigitalOcean, AWS Amplify, those are all going to be automated rebuilds. AWS S3 will not because that's something I have manually updating my assets for. But uh, if you haven't checked that video out, it's in the playlist, the previous video to this, and I do have the playlist linked in my um, in the description so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in any of those but most of them will be um, running their redeployments now so to speak and so soon they will all have all green check marks in place um, but yeah that's that's it for Netlify so I felt that was kind of a short and sweet closure of this series and like I said, if there's something I have not covered in this series, please go ahead and drop a comment. 
saying if you would like to see something else added. And I'd, I'd love to go ahead and shoot a video on that. So leave a comment and subscribe so you get the notification. But otherwise, great work deploying, and I'll see you possibly in a future installment.